Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And I bought this book. It's called Clinical and Biochemical Aspects of Lactic Acidosis. I spent $370 on it. It took Amazon four weeks to ship it to Michigan from Europe. It was published in 1976. And the foreword was written by Sir Hans Krebs. Have you heard of the Krebs cycle? That's the second of four mechanisms of energy creation by the cells. So I'm going to read some uh, passages <clears throat> to you. In the foreword from Krebs, it says, It is now appreciated that lactic acidosis is by no means uncommon as a complication of conditions which interfere with some aspects of liver function. Such um, disorders can cause the lizard liver to become a lactic acid producing organ. So the next thing I want to read is, uh, says, <clears throat> Lactic acidosis is a commonplace accompaniment of conditions where tissue perfusion is inadequate. Lactic acidosis is thus a feature of everyday medical practice. So that means every doctor every day needs to talk about lactic acidosis. It's that common. The development of such an acidosis is an indication of the gravity of the situation and the need for urgent measures to restore tissue perfusion and oxygenation. So he's talking about more urgent care or emergent care there. But every, every day, people with some kind of an illness, whether it's a low grade or high grade, there's a degree of lactic acidosis. And um, if it's subclinical, that means that you need nutri nutrients, you need nutrition. And once it gets severe enough, then you go to the hospital. But everybody has it if you have a condition that is longer than three months old and it could be caused by different things which I'll get to here in a second so now that's a description of lactic acidosis from this book but what about um, metabolic acidosis that means that there's somewhere in the metabolism somewhere in the body there's a condition of acidosis so let me read a little bit off that, about that by metabolic acidosis we mean an acid-based disturbance of non-respiratory origin non-respiratory origin means that there's some disease process causing acidosis, whereas respiratory means you've just exercised and now you're out of breath. And so you have hyper, hyperventilation to get the oxygen levels back up. So the body's always trying to get acidosis back to normal. Now with lactic acidosis, the pH of the blood is normal. It's just high lactate. Okay, now here's different causes of lactic acidosis. Type, there's type A, that's poor tissue perfusion, low oxygenation, which can be caused by a lot of things. Okay, and then type B, it's associated with various causes. For example, diabetes, um, renal failure or renal problems, liver problems, that's an inadequate detoxification. I've talked about that in many of my videos. Infection causes lactic acidosis. I've talked about that. Leukemia, which is a type of cancer, so cancers cause lactic acidosis. It's the mechanism of it. They're related. Then there's ingestion or administration of drug or other toxic substances, such as fructose. We know that glycolysis causes the byproducts of acid and lactate and um, alcohol. Okay, so fructose is listed here. So is sorbitol and xylitol. Those are sugar alcohols. So when I made the good fat bar, the website is goodfat.bar, I did not use sugar alcohols for this reason. For other reasons too. But uh, sugar alcohols I've seen cause problems in the human body. We use monk fruit, which is the fruit of the gods. Buddha fruit. It's, it's a non-carbohydrate sweetener. Okay, other causes of uh, acidosis includes metformin, the most common drug used by, for diabetes. So if somebody's got diabetes and they're on metformin, they're giving themselves acidosis. Okay, and then they have um, hereditary, hereditary problems and miscellaneous, which I'm not going to go over. And then I also want to read to you regarding the diagnosis of lactic acidosis. I love this because... This is something that I've experienced with all my patients. I get questions, how do I measure acidosis? And this is what this book says. Acidosis is frequently evident in patients with severe 
circulatory insufficiency. Just name a chronic disease. Okay, this is so common a syndrome that blood lactate concentration is only occasionally measured. It being generally assumed that lactic, lactate acid accumulation is the major cause of acidosis. So they're saying just assume you have it. Okay, and then it's saying that um, the condition of acidosis will have a mixed origin, so multiple causes. I just love the differences in the language, even, even in the last 40 years. Okay, and then they go on with different um, cases. And you have this person here, this is from 1961. He had lactic acidosis. His blood pH was normal. He just had high lactate, which crowds out the oxygen, causing hypoxia in the blood. And then you have symptoms from that. Here's another person uh, from 1970. This person was a 41-year-old man who had two different infections. One was a staph infection, and then he had septicemia from it. And um, so there you go. Now the end of the book has about 25 or 30 pages of references, single line. This is all of M's. These are just the M's right here in, this, in the reference pages. Okay, so it was well worth the money to buy this. What has two thumbs and spends $370 on a 40-year-old book? This guy, for your benefit. And, I've, and so I figured out a lot of things from older books with scattered information from 1931 through 1960-61. And, I've, and I, when I bought this book, I wondered if I would learn something new. Yeah, there's a lot more technical information in here. But what it, it shows me is that lactic acidosis is so far-reaching it causes so many symptoms. It's the mechanism of so many diseases, and yet it's completely ignored. And it should, it's, they don't even address it well in the emergency rooms, let alone a clinic, a, a medical clinic. And I think there's a lot of holistic doctors that will address lactic acidosis even though they've never heard the term, they don't know what it is, but they're doing things to address the mechanism of chronic disease. So we just need our holistic doctors and our medical doctors to know what this is because it's so important. So the biggest, the last biggest breakthrough regarding this condition, lactic acidosis, was 1934 when the father of holistic nutrition released Cataplex B and Cataplex G. And in 1929, he released Catalin, the multivitamin. And that was the last biggest breakthrough now, now, lactic acidosis was starting to be described in the 1700s. This is not new. And it was found in cadavers in the 1840s, and it was found in humans in the 1850s. And then everybody's trying to figure out, well, how do we fix it? And they found that out in the 30s. And then the causes started to be discovered after that. So I feel like the research has been done. And now we just need to apply it worldwide everybody needs to apply it it's kind of like it's kind of like how much more research do we need on cigarettes we know cigarettes are bad any penny spent on the research of cigarettes is wasted because we just have to stop smoking and it, we're i think we're almost there with this lactic acidosis because i mean we've been studying it for a couple hundred years and i think the research is done now let's just get to work and solve this mechanism as well as solving the causes. And what are, just to end this video, what are the three main causes? Mold, toxins, excessive sugar metabolism over decades, and then hidden infections. That's it. There's just four major causes of chronic disease. And there are two mechanisms. My next video is going to be on the other mechanism that I never talk about and then you got all these symptoms you have hundreds or thousands of symptoms so when a patient walks into the doctor's office they say I have this symptom and the doctor is treating the symptom always treating the symptom but you can't forget the cause and you can't forget the mechanism too so if you like this information please give me a thumbs up share and subscribe